Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 7.2, Solving Equations Using Addition or Subtraction Lesson. Pause while you write Section 7.2 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is use properties of equality to solve equations. Today we'll be starting on page 302 of your math textbook. Equations may be true for some values and false for others. A solution of an equation is a value that makes the equation true. The table below shows a value of x and an equation, x plus 3 equals 7. And the equation if, is true if both sides are equal. So if we look at the first row of the table, if the value of x is 3, then 3 plus 3 only equals 6, not 7. So both sides are not equal. So that means that 3 cannot be a solution for that equation. If we look at 4, 4 plus 3 equals 7. So that means that 4 makes both sides equal. So 4 is a solution for the equation. If we look at 5, 5 plus 3 equals 8. So 8 does not equal 7. Both sides are not equal. So 5 is not a solution. So the value x equals 4 is a solution for the equation x plus 3 equals 7. And when you see the symbol equal sign with a slash through it, that means is not equal to. Example 1, checking solutions. Tell whether the given value is a solution of the equation. So letter A, P plus 10 equals 38. So we substitute in P equals 18. So 18 plus 10, does that equal 38? No, when we add 18 plus 10, that only equals 28. So 28 does not equal 38. The sides are not equal. So P is, so P equals 18 is not a solution. Letter B, 4Y equals 56. Y equals 14. 4 times 14, does that equal 56? When we substitute in 14 for y and we multiply, we get 56 equals 56. So the sides are equal. So y equals 14 is a solution. Let's move on to page 303. At the top of the page, there's some good information. You can use inverse operations to solve equations. Inverse operations undo each other. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Take a minute to write these key ideas in your math notebook. Addition property of equality. When you add the same number to each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So example, uh, an example of that is 8 equals 8, and if you add 5, to both sides, you get 13 equals 13. And there's an example with algebra, x minus 4 equals 5. If you add 4 to each side, you have x equals 9 because the 4s cancel each other out because you have a negative 4 plus a positive 4. And 5 plus 4 equals 9. Write down the subtraction property of equality as well. When you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So using the same example from above, only with subtraction, we have 8 minus 5 equals 3 on both sides, and that re remains equal. And then algebra, x plus 4 equals 5, and then x minus 4. So again, the 4's go away because positive 4 
plus negative 4 equals 0. So all that's left on the left is an x. And then 5 minus 4 equals 1. So x equals 1. Let's look at example 2. Solve x minus 2 equals 6. So first we write the equation. Always write the equation first. Don't try and do it without doing that. And then we see that we have subtraction in our problem and we want to undo the subtraction by using the addition property of equality. So we add a 2 to both sides. And when we do that, the x turns out to be by itself and we have an 8 on the right-hand side, so 6 plus 2 equals 8. And then we always go back and check it. So we put our 8 back in where the x used to be, and we have 8 minus 2. Does that equal 6? Yes, it does, so we did our work correctly. The solution is x equals 8. And then letter B. 18 equals x minus 7. So we write the equation and we see that once again we have subtraction and that's what we want to undo so we use the addition property of equality. So we add 7 to both sides and since 18 plus 7 equals 25 our 7's go away and so we have x on the right, so 25 equals x. We check, and 18 equals 18, so the solution is x equals 25. Moving on to page 304, example 3, solving equations using subtraction. Solve x plus 2 equals 9. Since we're using addition here, then we need to undo that with subtraction. So we use the subtraction property of equality. So 2 minus 2 is 0, so we have x on the left. 9 minus 2 is 7. So x equals 7. We check it by putting it back in to the equation. So we have 7 plus 2 equals 9. 9 equals 9. So it checks out. The solution is x equals 7. Letter B. We solve 26 equals 11 plus x. We write the equation. Since we're using addition in our equation, then we want to undo that using the subtraction property of equality. 26 minus 11 equals 15. 11 minus 11 equals 0, so that leaves x on the right-hand side. So we simplify that, and it's 15 equals x. We check it. 26 equals 11 plus 15. So 26 equals 26. It checks out. The solution is x equals 15. Example 4 is our real-life application. Your parents give you $20 to help buy the new pair of shoes that are shown. After you buy the shoes, you have $5.50 left. Write and solve an equation to find how much money you had before your parents gave you $20. So when we break this out, we have the starting amount plus the amount your parents gave you minus the cost of the shoes is the amount left. So our variable is S is the starting amount. That's what we're looking for. That's the part we don't know. So S plus 20, so we started with some money, plus our parents gave us $20, minus the cost of the shoes, which was $59.50, equals $5.50. That's what we're left with. So we write our equation, S plus 20 minus 59.95 equals $5.50. And we look and we see that we're going to use the addition.
condition property of equality because we want to get S all by itself and we're going to start with that because the 5995 is subtracted on the left hand side. So when we add it, it goes away on the left and on the right hand side it becomes 6545. So we're left with S plus 20 equals $65.45. S still isn't all by itself, so we need to keep going. And here, the S is added to the 20, so we want to subtract 20. And if we subtract it from the left, we have to subtract it from the right. So 20 minus 20 is 0, so we have just S left on the, the left. And then we have to subtract 20 from the right. 6545 minus 20 is 4545 on the right. So our starting amount is $45.45. So that's how much we had before our parents gave us money. Let's take a look at the study tip. It says in example four, we can solve the problem arithmetically by working backwards from $5.50. So we could have done $5.50 plus $59.50 minus 20 equals 45.45. So our answer is reasonable. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the On Your Own Problems 1 through 11 below. They're also located on pages 302 through 304 of your math textbook. Show your work and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip, come to our next class prepared with the journal pages or other work from the flipped lesson completed, and be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have for the teacher and always have a good attitude. We'll see you next time in class.